Well, hey folks, if you've been following my channel for a while, you'd know that I'm all about living simple and cheap. So to see me post a video that says, I love credit cards, might seem contradictory, but it isn't. Because when credit cards are used in a strategic manner, they can play a very important role in frugal living. I would think that the majority of folks watching this video would agree that the number one stressor in relationships or in life in general is money problems. And what are money problems? Money problems are when you don't have enough of it because you spent way too much of it. Nine times out of ten, people's money problems all stem from credit card purchases. Credit can be your best friend or your worst enemy and it all depends on how you discipline yourself in your spending. Now, people write to me all the time and they share their plans with me. Some have gotten themselves out of debt and they've cut up their credit cards. Other folks have a two-year plan or a five-year plan. They're going to get everything paid off and cut up their credit cards. And some also say, I'm just like you. I pay cash for everything. I never use any credit. That's a misconception, because nowhere in any of my videos have I ever said that I don't use credit cards. I absolutely love credit cards, and I use them for everything, and I mean everything. When I say I pay cash for everything, it's true, and when I say that I don't have any debt, that's also true, but before I start dishing out all of my cash, I make the purchase with a credit card, then I pay the bill every month in full, so I pay no interest. By using credit cards instead of paying cash for each individual purchase, not only is it more convenient and it saves me time, but it saves me money as well. I have the convenience of using the credit card, and in the last few decades, I haven't paid one cent in interest. The credit card companies haven't made one cent from me, but every month they just keep on paying me. I get free stuff and I put a lot of free food on the table. Let's go inside, I'll get a cup of coffee, and I'll tell you how I manage my spending. What are you doing? How am I supposed to video like this? How, how am I supposed to make a video? <laughs> Fire feels wonderful. Cup of coffee tastes wonderful. <laughs> Life is good. Before I go any further, I want to say that the method that I use requires discipline. If you are undisciplined in your spending, this video will serve you no purpose. In fact, it may do you more harm than good, okay? I use my credit card for all of the things that I normally buy and pay for on a monthly basis, mainly my living expenses. I never use the card for purchases where I'm buying things that I can't afford. That's what credit cards were made for, so you can buy things that you can't afford. So we do, until our credit is maxed out, and then some get another card, and they continue in that process until they have buried themselves in debt. But by only using it for stuff that I'm going to pay for in full every month, it's a win-win. Instead of cutting a bunch of checks and then spending 50 cents to mail out each one of these checks, I use my credit card for everything, then I pay that bill in full every month with one check, and the credit card companies reward me. Either I have two of them, one pays me cash back and one 
I accrue free merchandise, points for free merchandise. Now remember my Christmas video a few years ago where I showed that 4,000 watt generator that Santa brought me at the cabin? I bought that generator and my out-of-pocket expense was only $22. I was stacking up the free points with that card and I would have waited until I could have bought the generator for free, but I wanted to use it in the Christmas video, and I had to come up with 22 bucks to make that purchase. But let me tell you, that was awesome. My little yellow generator, my little champion generator, I got for absolute no cost out of my pocket. Simply by using the credit cards to pay my living expenses. Now, credit can be a wonderful thing, okay? So eliminating your credit, I really don't recommend that. There are times that you need to buy something that you can't afford. For example, you need repairs for your vehicle to make it pass inspection. You need your vehicle. Well, if you use your credit card to get your vehicle on the road so you can continue on with your daily life, and then you have to pay a little bit of interest to pay that bill off. Well, the interest is justifiable in that situation. As long as you make your purchase and then you get it paid off. If you take a couple, they work real hard, they have their debt under control, they want to take a vacation, they've earned it, they go on vacation, they put everything on the credit card, and then they work hard at paying that off with a reasonable amount of time, and they get it paid off. Well, again, the interest is justifiable. But when you use a credit card to continually buy things you can't afford and it's frivolous spending, you all know the results of that. Now, I don't even have to say it. So I use my credit card to buy all of the things I normally buy, which are my living expenses, gas, groceries, propane, all of that stuff, dog food, you name it. And then I pay it off at the end of the month. I never pay a cent in interest, but I keep on stacking up the free merchandise on one card and they keep putting money in my account with the other. If you live frugally, you're the type of person who pays attention to micro savings and micro earnings. If you can save $2 here and you can make $2 here, well, that's four bucks. To some people, $4 is nothing. So let's not look at it as dollars and cents. Let's look at it as a food perspective. Okay? What is $4? Well, when we go to the grocery store, we buy the chickens that are on sale and we prefer to buy chick the smaller chickens because they cook quicker and they fit in our rotisserie and we love rotisserie chicken. When we buy them on sale, the chickens that we buy will average around $4 a piece. So if I save two bucks and I made two bucks, there's one free chicken that I just put in the freezer. What does a normal household spend on gas and groceries? I don't know. Let's just say it's $1,000. Most rewards cards will pay you 2% back on gas and grocery purchases. So if you spend 1000 bucks every month, there's $20 that you just put in your savings account. And $20 will buy five chickens. Okay? So just by using the credit card for gas and groceries that I'm going to pay every month, I just put five free chickens in the freezer. Several years ago, I was going down the highway and I hit a deer at 65 miles an hour. I did approximately $5,000 damage on my truck. When I went to pick up my truck from the auto shop, I had the check that was paid to me by the insurance company and I was just going to sign it over to the auto shop. I'm walking up and I see the visa symbol on the door. I kept my check, 
pulled out my Visa card. I paid for it there. The check went into my checking account. When the bill came in, I paid it with the money that I deposited. That simple act alone right there made me $50. 50 bucks is a nice batch of chicken I just put in the freezer. If I just pay cash, it's a safe way to go. The bill is paid, done deal. But if you're frugal, why not sweeten the pot a little bit and get a little bit of cash back? When you look at it as food and you look at how much free food you can put in your freezer on a monthly basis just by using your credit card to pay for all of those living expenses, let me tell you folks, it adds up. You just need to discipline yourself and pay that bill in full every month. Like I said, I've been doing this for decades. I've never paid a cent in interest, but the credit card companies just keep putting free food on my table every single month. And to me, <laughs> that is just good backwoods logic. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, now that it's deer season, I'm getting a lot of questions. People are asking for some venison recipes, different questions about deer processing, that sort of thing. Most of the time when I cut up the deer, we grind pretty much the whole deer. Take the back straps and maybe a choice cut here or there and grind the rest of it. We utilize it a lot better that way. One thing I love is burritos. We make them all the time. I make a batch. They heat up really easy. They're great for breakfast. I'm going to show you the basic recipe that I start with. A lot of times this is all I do. So mix these ingredients. Sometimes I put in some chopped jalapenos, you name it. Make them a little more cheesy, a little less cheesy. Make them hot, make them mild. That's up to you. Pound of ground venison, a can of refried beans, whatever type you like, regular old taco seasoning. Most of you buy it in little packages. Some shredded cheddar and some soft burritos. And that's it. I'll show you the process. Normally we cook on a wood stove, but for filming it's much better right here near the window. I'm going to brown up this venison. Now venison is very lean and can be dry. I like to add a little bit of healthy fat to it. Sometimes I just use olive oil. Today I'm going to use some refined coconut oil. Just a little bit in the pan there. I'm using refined coconut oil because if you use the unrefined stuff, it'll have some coconut flavor to it. After the meat is browned up, I put in my taco seasoning. If you're using little pouches, just follow the recipe on your pouch. Alrighty, the seasonings are mixed in. I'm not sure why they call them refried beans. Do they get fried twice? I don't know. I don't never really knew that. I'll have to look it up. And just get all that mixed together. It's all good to him. That's it. When this is thoroughly mixed and heated through, I'm going to shut the heat off. I'm going to lay those burrito shells on top of this. I'm going to cover it. That way they can steam and soften a little bit. So when I roll them up, they don't break. I got my four shells. I'm going to lay them right on top. I'm going to cover that. They've been in there about a minute or so. I'm going to flip them over, give them about another minute. Just to get them nice and soft. Put my shell down. I put on the meat and I leave a good inch and a half at least of the burrito sticking out. Put on the cheese. Fold in each end.
pull them over. And once you have your burritos wrapped up, you can eat them just like that. I like to have that burrito shell a little bit crispy. You can put them on a cookie sheet, put them in an oven of around 350 or so till they get nicely golden brown. My preferred method is in a cast iron fry pan or on a griddle. Just put a little oil in the pan, put them in. I can monitor them that way, roll them around so they're nice and golden brown, just like a grilled cheese, and they're outstanding. It doesn't take long to cook these because all the ingredients inside the burrito is already cooked. Just putting them in the oven or in the pan just to get that shell browned up a little bit, add a little bit of crispiness to it, makes a big difference. Okay, that looks done to me. Yep, beautiful. That's a tasty burrito right there, made in the fry pan. Make it out camping. The extra burner, your gas grill, charcoal, you name it. They're awesome. So there we go, nice burrito, nicely browned up. Oh, that is good stuff. Well, they're easy to make, as you can see. Nice way to use up some of that ground venison or any other ground game meat. But, of course, it doesn't have to be wild game. You can use domestic meats, ground pork, ground beef. Makes a great burrito. Give them a try. Enjoy. Okay, time is marching on. I'm going to try and bang out a few quick questions before I wrap it up. <laughs> There's a lot of questions now that it's hunting season. People are asking if I will do a video on field dressing a deer. I filmed that whole process back in 2016, but I don't think I'm going to put it on YouTube. There's so many problems with YouTube now, and they demonetize videos like that. Like my meat processing video have been demonetized. They still run ads on them, but I don't get paid for them. If I put up a field dressing video, they're going to do the same thing. And when I make a video, I take the time to make a video. That's time that I have to take away from something else that I need to do. And to do it, put all that time and then have no paycheck from it. I can't do that. Whether or not I put that on Patreon, I'm, I'm not sure. Like the hunting videos, I will show little bits and pieces of that on my channel because it is a part of my life. But the whole hunting scene, the hunting trip kind of thing goes on Patreon because if they demonetize it, at least I still get paid for my time and my effort. We all need a paycheck, you know. None of you will go to work and at the end of the week not get a paycheck. YouTube's getting ridiculous. In fact, on that subject, if you click on some of my videos, like Back to My Roots Part 4, The Life of Chasing Dreams, and the video comes up as private, that's because I'm getting a wave of copyright claims on a lot of my older videos. And I'm not going to let them get a cent from me, so I just locked the video up. And throughout this winter, I'm going to remaster and repost a lot of these videos to try and recoup my earnings. That's why the Patreon channel is a godsend to YouTubers because a lot of YouTubers are having the same problems that I have. And you can't go through all of this work and then they get demonetized and just keep on doing it and not get paid, you know. So, if you click on a video and it comes up as private, that's why. And it'll get reposted and remastered somewhere down the line when I have time. Okay, now that that's out of the way... Oh, in the last video, someone I saw is cooking venison. They're asked how I clean the cast iron pans. Well, all I do is put some water in that pan, let it boil. While it's boiling, use a wooden spatula. It'll lift all of that stuck food right up. Clean it out. 
little soapy water if you want. That's fine. It's not going to hurt your pan. I just don't let them soak in a, you know, a strong detergent. <laughs> but most of the time you don't need that. Just lift up all that food, some hot water. Give the pan a light coating of oil like I've showed in the past. Hang it up. And I know some of you are going to ask me, why is a fry pan missing? That's just because <laughs> Lori hasn't finished her dishes yet. <laughs> or nothing's getting thrown at me. So, anyway. Okay. Lots of questions about our well. You know, our well, we've been getting that water by hand from a well that was hand dug by the settlers in the 1700s. People want to know, is it hard water? Is it sulfury? Do we have to um, purify it? Things like that. The water is fantastic. No residue left in the pans, no limestone, no bird clock singing, no um, hard boiled egg smell, nothing. Fantastic water. But we do run it through our purifier just to be safe. We filter all of our water. You see me feeding the birds. Lots of people asking what we're feeding the birds. My favorite thing and the bird's favorite thing is just the black oil sunflower seeds. When we were starting getting some finches and a few different breeds, I bought one of those bags of the songbird mix, you know, all the different little seeds. All they did was dig out the sunflower seeds. I brought the whole bag and put it to, at the dump mall and let somebody else have it. <laughs> one more quick one. Lots of people have been asking how the hunting season's been going. It's been going very well. Off to a good start. Got a couple of meat deer in the freezer. I want to get one more deer just to make sausage with, but I've seen a few interesting specimens on the trail cam, and I'm kind of holding out, hoping, hopefully, to get a crack at one of those. But if not, one way or another, we'll get one more deer, make some sausage, share the process with you, and we'll call it a season. So that's it for now, folks. Keep your questions coming. Click that like button. It helps the channel. All the best to you. And God bless. Frank and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end. Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss.